Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Taped Vibes tutorial series. My name is Sebastian and today we will take care of mapping the samples, setting the playback markers and create a first playable instrument. When starting Halion 7, um, you'll get this home screen on first startup and there you have the choice between different initial presets that you can start with for creating instruments and patches. So we will go for the sample instrument. And as you can see, this loads up a dedicated set of different windows and window configurations. You can choose them anytime in future as you want to. And you can also save screen sets for your personal use. So if you need the sample editor next to the program um, tree overview and the mapping editor next to it, you can save this as a screen set and refer to this in future as, as you want to. So, but I will stick with this um, default settings for the sample instrument. Um, I'll just go in full screen mode so that you, that you can see a little bit more. And let's go and rename and change the program tree structure that we will need later on for um, the taped wipes instruments. So I start and name this uh, init taped wipes. And this is a layer, um, a Halion Sonic layer preset. And as I told you in the video before, as we made the folder structure, um, there are differences between layer and program presets. So the program preset can contain up to four layers. So you can layer various sounds for layers and store them as a program. And the program is the normal preset uh, that you load as a Halion or Halion Sonic user. And you can also just have one layer inside. And this is basically our use case. So I will create this initial taped vibes instrument, this Wurlitzer piano. This is one layer. And later on in sound design, this one layer will be loaded in Halion Sonic and exported as a program preset so that the user or you can load this up uh, in any DAW and make music with it. The program has a few more advantages you can have on these four different slots. You have four layers, four slots, and you can um, put individual FX on there as well. And you have some can can also choose some master plugins and master FX that all can be held and stored into this program. But we won't use all these details for our instrument. So I will take this first layer, um, this sample instrument layer, and rename this to taped wipes. Um, I'll rename by hitting F2. Um, you can also, if it's selected, you can um, go with return um, and open the renaming part. And I'll navigate pretty quickly through the tree using um, W for going up, X for going down, D for going one hierarchy um, below, and A for going this hierarchy back. So if you're familiar with uh, these kind of of navigation, you can be pretty, pretty fast inside of Alien. It's a little bit like uh, in gaming WASD, but the S in Halion is for soloing for the specific element in the tree. And that's why it's WADX. We don't need those two LFOs, so I will delete them. And we won't need the sample instrument zone in first place, so I will delete this as well. And the sample instrument bus, I'll rename this as um, taped vibes FX because this is the bus that we will later on store all the effects in that we refer to with use of scripting and the program bus, so to speak, our master bus, um, I'll call this taped vibes bus. I will create some more layers below this taped vibes top layer. Um, and you can either do so by right clicking and select new layer or zone or whatsoever. Um, or you can use these icons on top of here. So you can create new zones, you can create new layers, you can create new MIDI modules or buses. Um, so I'll go with these icons because I'm way faster with this. This one will be called DI. And inside DI, um, I will we'll start with one layer sustain and one layer called release. So the sustain is the node on you hold, you press the key, the tone rings until you release the key and then the samples from the release um, layer will be played. We have to configure this, but we'll, you'll see this later on. And inside release, um, 
we exported three release round robins. So I will quickly name those layers as well. So now, um, as we have a basic setup of our, um, of our program structure, um, I will start mapping the samples. Therefore, I go to my um, Windows Explorer in my case and go for my folder where we located the samples last time. And as you can see, all the shards, the different round robins, these are my release sounds and the sus are my sustain sounds. So I'll search for underscore sustain and I will hit 186 items. So I can select those all, Control A or Command A on Mac, and drag and drop them onto the sustain layer. Now, as you can see, I'll get this import samples dialog, and this can be pretty handy for various use cases. So um, we have now a pretty basic instrument, but um, even with more complex and thousands of files, you can auto import them. Um, making use of this import samples dialog. The key range defines the distance, how far your root key will be stretched out. So for example, if you have a C3, and this should also cover the C sharp 3 and the D3, um, then there is a certain key range needed for every root key. But as we sample chromatically, this doesn't affect us. Um, for the root key, I um, tell this import samples dialog that it should use the text from the sample name as we included this in our sample naming scheme. For the velocity range, I go for fixed and start for, from 0 to 127, so across the whole range. We have three different velocities, but I, will, I didn't define or predefine um, the transition points where velocity 1 should stop and velocity 2 should hit. That's why I didn't set any specific ranges into the sample name, and I will define this later on in the mapping. You can also use, for example, um, from sample name pattern, and then you can make use of different patterns. If you have more complex mapping, this is pretty handy. If you stored anything else in your sample files, because you edited your samples very differently in a, in a specific uh, sample editor, and you included loops, tunings, gains, and start and end markers, you can all include these from the sample file. We don't have any more information in the sample file, but nevertheless, it's not a big deal if they are activated. It won't have any effect. So hitting OK, and um, as you can see, there are multiple samples in there. So let's head over to the mapping window. And as you can see, there's a little gap in there. I will explain you this in a second. Uh, but first, you can zoom in by control and use the mouse wheel or you can use these um, zoom in and zoom out buttons. Um, or you can also make use of G and H, like in Cubase. If you're used to Cubase, this can be pretty um, familiar to you. So let's take care of these samples. I know that there were mechanical problems with the attack phase of the G sharp one and the A one. That's why I will select the G one and increase it to the G sharp one. And I do the same with the A sharp one and decrease it to A1 so that these gaps are filled. I will continue mapping those round robins of the release. As you can see, I mapped the three round robins of the releases. And to get a better overview in the mapping editor, you can make Halion to only show you the selected layer in your program tree. So by hitting V on the keyboard, um, this activates the visibility option. Um, you, this visibility, you see this on this little eye icon here, um, it follows the selection on your layer. There's one more specific thing with the release samples. And um, as you can see, I recorded all samples from A0 to C6. But um, if you check the mechanics of a Wurlitzer piano, um, there are dampers that are, that are stopping the reeds from vibrating, so that are they are damping the sound. Um, it's pretty similar to a piano mechanics. So on a piano, you have a damper and that closes the string vibration because it actually dampens the string and um, that's why the sound is stopping. But also from a piano, the high register notes, they are decaying completely. The decay of a high register note is usually shorter than a lower note. And that's why there's a certain split point. Um, it, it's 
it's different from piano manufacturers, for example. Uh, you can watch this closely. Um, up, different upright pianos and grand pianos have different split points where the damper actually stops damping, where there are no more dampers in the mechanics. And the same applies for a Wurlitzer piano. Um, the Wurlitzer dampens up to G5, so we don't need any release sounds above G5. So I will um, select them carefully and I can delete those. Let's check if I didn't do any mistakes. So the sustain goes up to C6 and I will make them ring out later on with my envelopes and the release stops at G5. And now let's take care of the different velocity layers because uh, right now you hear three different velocities at the same time over the whole range and that's not what we're aiming for. Therefore, I'll go for this magnification class over here. And this is actually a filter bar where you can filter for a specific string in your samples, for example, or in your MIDI module or in your layer mapping and so on and so forth. This is a pretty powerful tool if you once get used to it. And therefore, I'm typing in V01, so the first velocity. And I will check where is it in. It's in the sustain. It's in the release and in the round robin 1, the round robin 2, and the round robin 3. So I'll go on top of this. So I'll see all V01s that are in this, below this knot of the taped wipes. And I can mark them. And with X, I can confirm the selection. And you'll see they get selected in the tree. And here on the bottom um, of this program tree window, um, you'll see there are 239 zones selected in 186 layers. And in the program, there's a total amount of 708 zones. Um, this is pretty handy. And always, if you do selections, please keep an eye on this and um, get used to to know somehow the numbers that you're, you're selecting and that you're working on. For example, if you select four layers, um, you want to be sure that you do your changes only on those four layers and not on everything. So I have all the VO1 selected and um, here in this little info bar, I can adjust the velocity. The low is zero. Okay, that's fine. And the high, I go for 50. So if I'll check this, They are all, as you can see, these are the low velocities you want. I reset the filter and do the same for Rio 2. And there are also 239 samples selected. I'll confirm the selection of X and go for velocity 51 to 100. The same for Rio 3 as well. And I go for 101 till the end. So let's quickly check Reset this filter bar um, and let's quickly check the sustain samples. They're looking like this. This is looking pretty good. For the release samples, I have my round robin 1, my round robin 2 and my round robin 3. So as you can see, there are little gaps in there as the zone counts um, were also a little differing. And in this case, I won't pitch them. I won't pitch the, this one up till a few semitones because there are actually a few tones missing, a few notes missing. Mm, I will select those files and um, change the velocity to full range so that the mapping is um, completed. I will do this um, at this point as well. By checking this, um, I see a little mistake that I made. You see here, war pedal round robin three. So there are actually some pedal noise samples um, that I accidentally mapped to this program. So I used the filter bar as well and see, okay, there are some pedal noises in there, um, which is pretty funny because I recorded more than three pedal noises. And as I searched in the Windows Explorer for round robin one and not for short underscore round robin, um, they made up into this mapping but so i will delete them out i don't need those at the moment let's go to the taped wipes program and um, let's give them a dedicated uh, layer space so another thing that i fast forwarded um, i mapped all pedal noises to 
round robin layers as well. And I will um, address those different round robins with scripting. I will show you this in another episode. But I don't want them to be mapped on C3. So I select those and um, go as C minus 2 and move them to the lowest key. And um, I also just use velocity 127 to 127. And this actually helps me that I don't see these zones uh, in my working area. And um, later on, I will trigger those with scripting anyway, and it doesn't matter where these are um, located in my mapping. One thing before I forget, um, these pedal noises, um, they need, of course, the root key where the low and the high key is located. So I need the C minus one. Otherwise, uh, they will be pitched and this can sound pretty annoying. By control click, I can reset this to C minus one and then it jumped to this volume. With all samples mapped, let's try, hit the chord and listen what actually happens. It sounds like a Wurlitzer, but um, there are lots of things to do. So let's dive a little more in and let's go to the sample tab. And as you can see, there is some gap between the sample start marker and the actual waveform starting. So, and this is pretty different. This comes from our editing. Um, as I said, okay, I want some gaps uh, in between so that I can do a pretty fast editing workflow in Cubase and the rest I'm taking care of in Halion. So I will zoom a little in in the waveform. Then I'll see where it actually starts. And I can activate snap to zero crossing and go with my sample marker towards the actual sample start. Also with G and H I can zoom in or control the mouse wheel um, or with these arrow keys. And so I will go through all these files and check where the sample starts and set my sample start markers. This is a pretty tedious task, I'll be honest, but um, it gives you lots of flexibilities so that you can, for example, include these pre-rings or you can move around the sample markers um, a few to avoid maybe a bad click in the beginning of your attack phase and so on and so forth. You actually can use scripting. This would suggest you a pretty good sample start marker um, that you can go from. Um, I will show you this in the next episode. Um, and for now, I'll first fast forward this because I won't bother you with the whole process how I'll set hundreds of sample markers. But one quick thing before I'll fast forward this, how do I treat the release sounds? Um, the release sounds, I will play you this one, for example. I actually only need this part. So the closing, how the note ended and the mechanical noise that's coming from here. Halion has one good new feature that came with Halion 7 and this is the FFT view that really helps you finding the sweet spot where the mechanical noise comes, where the click came, and you'll see this right away in, in this part. So here's the attack phase, and here's the real release phase. Um, you can dial in spectrogram, waveform settings, um, you'll have min max level, you can intensify, you have different color schemes, so you can really adjust this um, to your taste. And I will set my sample start marker to this release part. So I only have this last little click. Um, I'll show you the same process with a lower note because on lower notes you will get a little more. You don't see this uh, actually release part that good as it was on high note. Um, but roughly about here is the closing sound how the damper dampens the read. So see you soon when I'm back and um, have set all my playback markers. So welcome back. I set all the sample start markers and the sample end markers as well, because with the FFT view, I can pretty good see when the actual fundamental pitch or the pitches of 
uh, the overtones are decaying and so it's pretty easy to find the sample end marker or a good and suiting sample end marker with the FFT view enabled. I go to lower pitches, um, it's even better to see in there. Um, so here's the fundamental pitch and um, it fades and blurs away. Let's go for the release samples and check a few of those. You can see denote on and here's the release phase. Um, and so I went through all these files and, and set up good markers for them. You see this in the spectral as well, that this is a little more blurry and a more noisy. And this is actually the sound we are looking for. Yeah, let's go in and set some settings that are suitable so that we can play a few more notes and we get a more playable patch. Before we adjust a few more things um, so that we can play this instrument a little better, um, let's save our work so far. Um, I'll go for the init taped vibes and select the top point in this program tree, go with right click and export program as VST3 preset. And I select my folder where it should be in. Um, it's on desktop, tape vibes, library, layer presets, and there the init taped vibes should go in. And I'll mark the export HS layer. So export as Haley and Sonic layer, as the tooltip says, and then verifies on. And verify verifies if your layer structure, um, so the program tree structure we built, is suitable for um, the use as an Haley and Sonic layer. And if there are any errors, um, it will tell us. There is actually a little error drin. Um, the voice management must be enabled on the layer in taped vibes. So on this top layer, the voice manager must be enabled. And I can tell him, okay, fix this. And it tells me, okay, must be enabled. It is fixed. Hit OK. And um, it's done. It's saved. And as I can see on sound, there's my voice management section. Okay, it enabled the voice manager. Actually, I disabled it before to show you this verify option. Um, because if you start with the home screen and the sample instrument, um, it's set already properly. So let's have another look at the release layer. And we have three round robins, but at the moment they're played at the same time. So um, we go to this release and select the MIDI module. And there is actually a conditional module called layer alternate. Um, and if you are in this edit sound tab, you'll see this little page that the layer alternate module delivers. And you have in this expression pool and the expression pool is all layers beneath this module in this one layer structure. You have these three round robins and you can um, drag and drop them to this alternation page. And you can say, okay, I want them to be played random exclusively. So now by hitting the same key multiple times, um, you'll see that the different round robins uh, will be played back in a random exclusive way. There are a few more things to dial in for the release samples. So let's go to the release layer, top layer, and to edit zone, there's a voice control section, and here you can select note off trigger. So um, these release sounds, um, I'll solo them quickly. Now I press the key, as you can see here, and I release it, and now it will be played back. Just this short portion of the release sound. And um, in the release mode, you have different um, options to choose from. So you can choose the note off envelope, uh, note on and note off envelope, velocity. And what I'll do in this case is um, I use current amplitude. And you can uh, do a certain level amount um, of how this release mode should affect the level of the played release samples. And um, I'll go for 90% in this case um, and try this out. We can adjust this later on as well, but this is a value that I made good experience with it as I played around with it before. And furthermore, um, I'll change the playback mode to one shot as the release sample should be played completely. And I will go to the envelope section, which is here, um, and use the one shot envelope as well. I will dial in some um, some attack phase and some release phase and it's actually not that long you can also activate a show sample waveform and there you see um, this release sample 
how even how the envelope affects this this waveform and to be safe through also long uh, samples i will have this node at around let's say 300 300 plus milliseconds we'll have to adjust the envelope on the sustain layer as well um, so let's uh, go in here and as i want a kind of crossfade from the sustain to the release sample um, i'll go for the sustain layer and decrease this release phase to a pretty short amount of time i'll type it in uh, 120 milliseconds with a curve of minus 10 this is pretty cool um, so if i listen to them in solo it cuts away the sustain part and as i told you before for these higher nodes starting from g sharp 5 um, i'll mark them out i'll need them to be played back um, in a one-shot mode so you'll see this in the envelope as well i'll have to zoom a little in you see that this release phase is a little grayed out and if it's active so it's a normal playback mode that you will hear just release um, then you actually can see this part so let's check and have a listen how the sustain and release implementation um, that we did how this interacts um, and i will test this with specific with some lower notes as the dampening of the read takes more time and the lower notes have the most decay and the longest release phases and decay phases um, and yeah let's have some listen i play lower note okay d1 I mute the release. Pretty interesting what's happening. Um, so I'll go in and let's see where the D1 uh, sample is. Here's a D1. And let's have a listen in the sample editor. And that's another argument why I have these short notes completely imported in Halion, not just the release phase, because now it gives me the opportunity to um, compare a real recorded attack and release phase with um, the one that we implemented in Halion. Pretty good, I would say. And let's check some higher notes, the last one that are getting damped. Okay, pretty interesting. But this is, yeah, this is the behavior that the original Wurlitzer piano has as well. Before I close the second episode, there are three little things that I wanted to show you. So first, I increased the key range of the highest and the lowest note um, that you can play it over the 88 keys of a normal grand piano. Second, I set a different point for the velocity transition of the first and the second velocity. So I set it to 60. So the first one ranges from 0 to 60 and the second uh, from 61 to 100. Why? You're mainly hitting in this middle area with most of the MIDI keyboards. Okay, this differs from brand to brand and of course of your playing style. So while playing I checked the meters on the left side and it was mostly in this region and that's why um, I increased the lower velocity so that it also gets used. And this contributes to a more lively playing experience um, as you're hitting all three velocity steps from time to time and not just one or two. And the third thing that I did, I selected all sustain samples and went to the sample display. And here you have some normalized feature and the peak normalization. And you can say, okay, uh, the peaks should be at minus one, for example. You can also use zero dB. Um, but I highly recommend to go for minus one or a little below um, so that you avoid intersample peaks. And then if you hit this 
button, it normalizes the samples. You get access with this info bar of each individual sample. If you use some peak normalization and some batches in general, please make sure that you check all your nodes chromatically and check the quality of how this automatic process treated your samples and give it to a friend and let him or her check your files again so that you can ensure that nothing went wrong with this automatic process. Leveling an, an instrument and voicing an instrument is a whole topic on its own. Um, and I could fill a complete episode just talking about loudness and normalization of uh, individual files and individual samples for a sample library. Let me know in the comments down below if there should be a video in, in future showcasing how instrument normalization can be done in a different way. And there are also routines and methods that you can access with Lua and scripting wise. And this is a more advanced way, but a way more reliable and better way to go with. So, um, but that's a whole future topic on its own. So this is the end of the second episode. Thanks for joining me on this one. In the next one, we'll have a closer look at Lua scripting and how it is used in the Halion context. And we will also write some little example code of how you can automate the process of setting the sample start markers. So please like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. See you there. Bye.